The animal spirits have made it very loud and clear for me on the day of the Capricorn full moon that they have messages for you. These messages are regarding, again, the Capricorn full moon and how this energy is pouring into you to make your life easier, to make your life better, to get you into a flow state to show you where you are already aligned, to show you where they're adding some tweaks, some changes. We'll be checking in with your higher self. We'll be diving into all of the necessary aspects to get you in alignment with this Capricorn full moon energy so that moving forward, you can feel aligned, divine, and right on time because you always are. But it's always nice to check in. So that's what we're doing here today is a nice check-in. So the animal spirits out here have chosen us. I literally saw them in descending order. So from left to right reveals to you the animal that I saw last to the animal that I saw first. And animal is used loosely here because it's an insect as well included. But you know, you get the vibes. So group number one you, my friends, are aligned with the duck spirit if you feel guided to the duck spirit, which says find comfort and balance in simple ways. You have support all around you. Group number two, you align with the wasp spirit card that says sometimes life stings. Group number three, you have the osprey. I believe that's how you pronounce it, which states your success is now at hand. Allow the abundance to flow to you effortlessly. And group number four, the spider spirit. Make your dreams real. Let me know in the comment section down below what group or groups you are feeling guided towards. And we want to use signifying emojis so that I can see who chose what group. So for the duck group, we're going to keep it simple and use a duck emoji. For group number two, we're also going to keep it quite simple and use the bee emoji because the wasp emoji does not exist. For group number three, let's use an eagle emoji because that's the closest we're going to get. And group number four, let's use the spider emoji. So I'll be looking for your duck, your bees, your eagles, and your spiders to see what group you felt guided towards and your feedback and how it resonates. I'll be looking for all of that in the comment section down below. I love, love, love reading your comments. I love, love, love interacting with you all. And I love, love, love seeing how these messages reflect into your world. It also helps to make me a better reader for you in future readings. Speaking of being a better reading for you, not reading, speaking of being a better reader for you, if you would like to book a personal reading, that will be the very first link in the description box down below. We've been having such a great time bonding in that way on that personal level. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about booking readings, you can always message me on my website in the bottom right hand corner. A chat box will pop up. Just get straight to the point and let me know what your question is and I'll be happy to assist. Second link in the description box is for Patreon content, which is content that you won't catch here on the channel. We are really just scratching the surface over on Patreon. There's plenty of content already up, but there's so much more to come and so much more unfolding. And I'm super excited to see how our Patreon community blossoms. And I think those of you that have already donated to the channel via P.O. box or virtual tip jar. But if you are interested in providing for the channel in some way, shape or form, there is that virtual tip jar and P.O. box in the comments, not not in the comments. It's in the description box down below. Now, I've long talked enough. Let's go ahead and get into your reading. Group number one. 
that resonates with the duck spirit let's go ahead and dive into your reading and find out how this capricorn full moon will be pouring into you to ease your life to ease your steps to ease your process moving forward i'm going to complete your layout with all your cards and then we will dive into your message Group number one. I see that comfort has been deceiving you. But you are coming into a new curiosity. Your inner child is waking up or coming out of the corner or a dark space. It's as if this child was experiencing some sort of bereavement, I believe is the correct word. Define bereavement. the fact or condition of being bereaved honey you can't use the definition in the word one second group number one define bereaved deprived of a close relation or friend through their death ah yes so your inner child feels like it's been pushed into a corner or told to just go D-I-E to get over itself. Um, and 
this most definitely took a toll on the inner child where the inner child kind of just disappeared for a minute for so long to where the adult aspects of you began to look around and say, hey, where's the kid? Where's the child? Where's the fun? Where's the joy? Where's the creativity? Where's the inspiration? Where is the love? Where is the imagination? Where is the other world? Where is the other side? And so now that inner child is choosing to come alive. So I see in the main focus for you, which is also good news, there is some sort of masculine energy that you are cycling through or ending or alchemizing or transmuting. This is some sort of toxic logic where it's just strictly logic and fact-based and it was stressing everyone out and it sent the inner child into hiding. Imagine that loud, boisterous adult that scares children more than anything. That energy is leaving your life. So anything that made you feel unsafe, whether this was something within yourself or an energy within your environment, it's being handled, dealt with, filtered through so that the child feels safe to come out and play. This can look like new boundaries. This can look like relationships ending. This can look like relationships beginning. This can look like new coping mechanisms or defense mechanisms on your end. And I don't want you to take that as something negative. People like to weaponize the term defense. Like they say something that offends you and then they say that, oh, you're being defensive. Of course, I'm going to defend myself. I love myself. I'm going to defend myself and everything that I love. Of course, I am defensive when you offend me. Thank you for noticing my boundaries. Thank you for noticing my techniques. Thank you for noticing my spiritual grasp of reality to notice when you need to be checked respectfully, okay? And moving on into your reading, diving further into it, you're going to notice that your natural abilities to connect with other people is going to blossom. Your heart chakra is expanding in a way that is allowing you to easily connect with others. Now, just because you easily connect with others does not mean that the connections themselves are easy. It just means that it's a lot easier for you to see specific perspectives, see through certain lenses, see different projections, see different, did I say perspectives already? But ultimately, that's what it comes down to. You're going to notice a blossoming and expansion of your heart chakra that, again, makes it easy for you to naturally connect with other people. Even if these are people that you don't get along with, there's still going to be a naturalness to the essence, to the connection, to the connectivity that is going to be allowing you to see, learn, touch, heal, and feel in different ways. Speaking of heal, you can expect your solar plexus chakra to be undergoing a deeply healing and cleansing phase and experience 
This can be all internal or it could be reflected by an external experience. But either way, it's going to change your life externally because it's going to make you more fascinating. It's going to make you more fierce and it's going to make you more fine and it's going to make you more fabulous. For some reason, the letter F is really significant surrounding your solar plexus energy. Okay. And that makes me remember something that I want to look up. Hold on. Um, this is something that I used to know off the top of my head. I need to refresh myself on it. Um, let's see. Just take a moment to breathe. Oh, there it is. Take a moment to breathe with me. Okay, so the letter F. Oh, I should have trusted my intuition. So the letter F is equal to the number six. So there's something going on you could be checking out your sixth house or um, life path six or um, six energy is <clears throat> oh excuse me so sorry six energy is virgo energy um, this talks about balance this talks about routines this talks about equilibrium homeostasis so you're going to be experiencing all of this in expansive ways due to your solar plexus chakra that is going to be healing, okay? There's also a message here from your ancestors where they are letting you know that you're going to feel as though you are falling. Um, uh, the term falling from grace is coming through, but you're going to quickly understand what's actually happening. Um, what's really going on here is that you are being um, brought down to a specific level so that you can have a different perspective. Imagine the view that you have from the 10th floor versus the view that you have from the 7th floor. Any difference in the levels of the floors is going to give you a different perspective. So your ancestors are purposely dropping you down to a different level for you to see something from a different perspective. For some of you, this will look like your job or your manager or someone asking you to help out some newbies um, or check out some newbies. Uh, oh, my bad, y'all. Um, that could have something to do with it too because that was a alarm set for 7 a.m. Um, but there's something being brought to you where it's going to feel like you're taking a step back or going into a time machine um, and it's meant to be rewarding in a way that you are taking notes and preparing to take it back up to the next level with you. The ancestors want to ensure you that this is no form of punishment. This is actually, if anything, it's more signifying of your level of growth. I think that the ancestors want to remind you where you came from in some way, shape or form um, in order to remind you how far you've actually gone because you may have lost sight of that. There's also this concept here too of gifts, people, places, and things falling out of the sky, falling out of the atmosphere into your lap, into your life. The ancestors want you to know that this is them. All right. Another message that I see here is a layer of yourself that is being peeled back to allow for integration. There is 
less of you required to go into the next phase, the next stage, the next space. When I say less of you, I mean less layers, less coverings, less masks. This requires vulnerability. And I see you stepping into this wholeheartedly, fully and completely. It may leave you with a brief moment in time of worry, concern, the feeling of spiraling, but you will quickly gather yourself, get yourself together and realize that this is actually not a spiraling to the bottom or a summoning to a dark space. It's actually a renewal, a reset, a rebirth, a readjustment and reconfiguration. So we just addressed everything across the top here. <sighs> so now diving into what you should be focused on in the 3D. It's interesting because in the 3D, you have nothing but wands, which is fast moving, action oriented, faith based, on a wing and a prayer. While the guidance is to actually be like air to control the fire, to control the flame. The main idea here is as things come to you, do not put them on the back burner for later. Start creating them now. Start focusing on it now. Start diving into it now. That doesn't mean that you have to do it immediately, but instead of putting it on a list and saying, I'll handle that later, write it down and expand the idea in the current moment. Because there's a lot more that you're capable of doing. There's a lot more that you're capable of accomplishing. There's a lot more that you're capable of achieving if you take the inspiration, take the idea, expand into it, examine it, and then perfect it. And when I say perfect it, I just mean to your liking. There's no such thing as perfect. We're not striving for that. You are perfect as you are imperfect. Ultimately, what I'm getting here is if you get the inspiration to clean out your closet and donate here and sell this there and do that there, don't say, oh, I'll do that, insert some future date here. No. If you get that inspiration, go to your closet in the next moment of free time and start separating out the things that are going to be given away, sold, et cetera, et cetera. In the physical, you're being called to not put off for later what you can do today. You can start this in very small ways, like, oh, I'll do that laundry tomorrow. But if you have time today, find that energy within you to do it today. Your tomorrow self will thank you. Here we have your higher self. 
who is juggling (laughs) all of the things of Christmas past, if you will. Your higher self is like, look, I can do a lot. I can do a lot, I can handle a lot, I can see a lot. However, you keep filing all these things away and I keep trying to politely remind you without overwhelming you. But because there's so much up here in the ethers that you've left with me to do later, we are in need of a cleansing. We are in need of a visitation so that we can empty out this file cabinet, so that we can get more organized, figure out what we're actually gonna do now, and what actually needs to be put off for later, and what actually doesn't even need to be handled or addressed by you, let somebody else do it. Your higher self says no more. Your higher self says, I'm actually putting you on the block list for a minute until We take a few steps back so that we can catapult into the next. So your higher self is calling you into your future's past because all these things that you've put off for later, it's right here. What are you actually gonna do now? What are you actually gonna do in the near future? And what are you going to allow someone else to handle, do, or take on? Picture your higher self right now as like your iCloud drive, if you will, or some sort of a software that is holding on to and maintaining a lot of footage, systems, photos. It's holding on to all of this stuff for you, but it's asking to be organized because some of it is pictures of black, like a picture that you accidentally took and you just got it sitting there. Let's organize this mess, if you will. That's what your higher self is calling you to do at this time. And keeping in mind that moving forward, once we get this organized, once we get this uh, this addressed, we're not going to go back to the old way of just throwing things without acknowledging their rightful place, their rightful space. This is all about organization. Your higher self is requiring integration of organization. But first, before we can even get into that, we need to take a few steps back to all the things that we said that we've been waiting on or waiting for. Oh, but wait, I need this or wait, I need that. Like, you know, you hold on to clothes And you're like, oh, I need to take this to the cleaners or, oh, I need to get the zipper fixed. Are you actually going to get those things done? If so, let's do it now. If not, pass it to the next one. Okay. The sun with the two of swords represents your new destination, your new journey, the new idea. And it's about not glamorizing the future. but realizing that the glamour is in the present and in the past, because that's what molds and creates the future, the unseen, the unknown. It's as if you've been planning for some sort of attack or terrorism and that's what's been 
holding you back. Like if you reflect based on the message that I'm receiving here, you've been expecting war or you've been expecting, excuse me, some sort of a storm for some time now, for some of you about seven years. And if you look back, the storm has never come or it's never been as bad as you projected it to be. So why are you storing up all of this energy when you could be creating and putting it out, doing something with that energy? This is the higher self's main focus is to stop locking things away expecting them to be better for a better day. Today is your best day. But in order to really tap into that, it requires acknowledging what can be done today. That's why we're tapping into inspiration, creativity, and fifth house energy and childlike energy a lot more and divorcing this toxic cycle of no it has to do this that 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 this is a false sense of organization because if we look at this system here all it left us with is a whole bunch of disorganized mess that now the higher self has to go through and reorganize so your new approach is going to leave your higher self a lot more organized, a lot more lightweight. And that is going to make you more capable of creating. That's going to make you more capable of doing. That's going to make you more capable, period. But above all, it's going to cleanse your mental space, which is allowing for you to take downloads and do things with them which is allowing for you to lighten up your aura, to lighten up your heart space, to lighten up that solar plexus and to really allow you to shine. Ah, closing dice for advice. We have Sagittarius, third house, and Mars. Sagittarius with it landing on the duck spirit that says, find comfort and balance in simple ways. You have support all around you. This is about outsourcing, determining who can benefit more from this, give that to them, determining who can get this done better than you, give that to them and when i say better than you i mean um if you have the means to hire someone to do the cleaning for you let them do it okay this is about freeing up your time space effort and energy for more things that you actually enjoy more things that you actually want to do you are also going to notice mars landing on top of the animals with the solar plexus chakra tiger eye energy you're going to notice your motivation comes back you're going to notice a sudden drive that's why you have all these wands in your 3d energy because you're going to feel invigorated you're going to feel like they put those electronic pads to your chest and said and you come back to life and that experience of falling or being down it invigorates you when you come back to life and it's really going to be adding value to your perspective again to glorify and glamorize the present and the past more than the future because if you focus on glamorizing the past and the present that ultimately is going to brighten your future 
Then we have the number three landing on top of this seven of cups here. This is about outsourcing. Seeing how other people do things, seeing how other people handle things, not to do it like them, but to take inspiration, to um, see a starting point. You're also going to notice um, your higher self communicating with you in new ways. So be paying attention, specifically something with technology. Um, you might notice a, a heightening in your experience with technology like a heightened sense of synchronicity with your technological uses. Like videos popping up that you just needed and you could not have found it at a more precise time. Or someone calling you with a message that you definitely needed it doesn't have to be technology though. This just feels like precision and accuracy that can only be initiated by your higher self, by the divine light of grace. So if you've been feeling out of whack, out of tune, out of production is what I'm getting here, that is ultimately changing. If you felt like you had been abandoned by the spiritual realm, that's false. And they're about to be showing that to you. And you know why that is? Is because any sort of feeling of disconnectedness from God is an illusion. That's what has been happening is that you've been eluding yourself into thinking that you are disconnected therefore you became disconnected but again now glamorizing the present and the past is allowing you to see a brighter future which is bringing you into a higher vibrant frequency allowing that that true nature of you and your heart chakra to expand which has you with the right people in the right places at the right time this is a period of expansion for you and this period of expansion is going to be accompanied by comfort, balance, and simplicity and support. You've isolated yourself in some way, shape, or form, but now you are coming out of this isolated energy. I have to do it all by myself. I have to do it all. I have to do this. I, da, 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 da. No, 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 no. You tried it that way. And now it's time to try it another way and this worked for you in some way shape or form because it created a comfortable space for you to think like oh this is working yeah 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 so it worked for some point in time you will be amazed with how this unfolding progresses you ahead Group number two that chose the number 64 with the wasp spirit that states sometimes life stings. Let's go ahead and dive into your reading. I'm going to pull your cards first and then we'll get into it. like what I'm seeing but let me let me shut up I'm just getting so excited
All right, let me take this in. Let me sit with this a moment. there was some form of a hindrance a blockage and the only cure was a deep forgiveness of self the reason i got so excited here is because this shows me that you are done blaming yourself. You are done beating yourself up. You are done down talking yourself. In those moments when life stings, when you maybe trusted the wrong person or went with one choice and then wish that you would have went with another. Instead of beating yourself up about it for days, weeks, months on end, you're taking on a new approach that I would like to call charging it to the game. Your experiences for some time have made you fear trust, made you fear connectivity, thus isolating you. You're coming out of isolation you're coming out of self-pity. You're coming out of confinement, solitary confinement. And in most cases, this was self-induced. It's coming through to me as a coping mechanism of some sort to avoid being hurt, to avoid being lied to. Trust is a big one with this group. Your faith has been tested. Your love has been tried time and time again. And for a while, you let it get to you. And I think at some point in time, you might have also accepted defeat and said, you know what? I give up. I'm done. Because people keep lying to me or because people keep hurting me or because nothing seems to ever work out for me, I'm done. But there's a part of you that knows that if you give up, you could never win. So that part of you is standing up. That part of you is taking that inner light, that inner knowledge, because it takes a lot of passion, fire, and angst to give up. So instead, you're putting that light under your own behind or under your own feet. And your higher self is like, 
I want to keep fighting and see where that gets me. <sighs> You'll notice that with other people, you will exercise trust in a new way. This comes with new formulated boundaries. This comes with new psychic abilities to see through certain situations. And this comes with a newfound intelligence that helps you to maneuver through certain situations and scenarios where some form of trust is required. Trust is required in everything that you do. Everything. You trust that when you put on your clothes before you leave the house, that they're going to cover you. That's trust. You get into your vehicle, you take public transit, and you trust that it's going to get you there. You show up to work every day and you trust that they're gonna pay you because trust is in everything that you do. There's a part of you that's activating and realizing this. So you're gonna notice that you are going to be testing or trying or accepting faith and trust in your experiences with other people. You're going to be testing your luck a lot more often as well. This is something that will be coming into your energetic field because you trust yourself. Even if the clothes let you down or the public transit or your vehicle lets you down or the job lets you down, what do you know for sure? that you can trust yourself. So if the clothes don't cover you like you trusted them to do, what are you gonna do? Find a solution. If the public transit or your vehicle don't do what you trusted them to do, what are you gonna do? Find a solution, find another way. If your job doesn't pay you like you trusted them to as you worked, what are you gonna do? Find a solution, find another way. If these clothes won't protect me, if these clothes won't cover me, new clothes will. If this car, if this public transit doesn't get me to where I need to go, something else will. If this job ain't paying me like I need it to, somebody else will. And in some cases it may require third party situations, circumstances and scenarios to make sure those wrongs are righted. But ultimately, I said all that to say that the trust is now in you, not in them, not in anything else. Even if you do put trust in the clothes, the transportation, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I'm getting to it, spirit day. <coughs> They're really highlighting this throat shocker, but we ain't there yet. Even if you <coughs> put your trust in the, the clothes, the transportation, the job, and they fail you, you have backup trust in yourself to know I'm going to find a solution. Ooh, ciao, okay? So what is healing for you right now is your throat chakra, okay? Your throat chakra is currently undergoing some healing, some cleansing, some renewal, some newfound love, some newfound freedom. Your throat chakra is going to be kind of like stretching its legs, if you will. Okay. Um, I also want to say too that the letter L is standing out to me and the letter L 
Okay, I had to take a pause to make sure I got this information correct because I'm seeing um, repetition of the letter L here, <clears throat> specifically Lepidolite and Lyramar. And the letter L is equivalent to the number three. So you could be seeing lots of repeating threes, but this also lets me know that you're going to see a lot of expansion in regards to your communication style, okay? Ah, which also rounds off to this three of pentacles and the three of cups. But before, oh, and the number three on that burning hero. Okay, but before we get there, like I said, you're going to be noticing some form of expansion within your throat chakra. This is going to be healing. You are going to be more expressive, um, popping off. And I don't mean that in a toxic way. I just mean more excitable to express yourself. Again, coming out of hiding, coming out of this self-imprisonment, whatever this energy had you like. It had you tucked away, it had you hidden. And you have the ancestors to thank for that because we have the blood dance in the space of a message from the ancestors and for the blood dance to be coming out in the space of the ancestors, your ancestors are like, who's a quitter? Not my bloodline. But you talking about? Which, what fuck you talking about? Fuck you mean? No. The ancestors would not let you quit. So I want you to know that whatever you've been experiencing, whatever has stung you in life, I want you to know that your ancestors are really the ones that are forcing you to get up. It's you doing it physically, but where that energy came from is definitely from the ancestors. They have they could have created circumstances that uh, literally got your blood pumping, moving, or boiling in some way, shape, or form so that you would feel like you had to get up, to feel like you had to stand up, to feel like you have no other choice but to try, but to progress, but to move, but to shake. Movers and shakers could be something that's a significant symbol, sign, synchronicity to you and or ancestors. In the place of the mirror is burning hero, the number three. This is helping you to see yourself in a new light so that you're not the victim I remember I talked about self-pity over here. That's a nice way of saying victim mentality. You're coming out of that. You're looking in the mirror and realizing that you're not the victim, but actually you're a burning hero. Oh yeah, I said to get your blood boiling. You, you have like this divine vengeance running through you at this time. But this flame is eternal. It's not a wild flame that's going to burn out after destroying everything around it. No, this flame is intentional. This flame is directed. This flame is guarded. This flame is, excuse me, tamed. This flame has been taught. This flame has been through the ringer. It's an eternal flame. No matter how small or how big it may have been at any point in time, it never stopped burning. And with that being in the place of the burning hero representing you in the mirror, this is how you are seeing yourself as unstoppable. So I want you to know that this is a big statement that I'm about to claim here, but whatever you've gone through, this is the last time. When I say the last time, I mean the last time that it will ever hit as hard as it did, that it will ever knock you down as many pegs as it did. You're unstoppable. Now that we've addressed the top row, now we can dive into this bottom row here. Again, lots of repeating threes. You have three burning hero, three of pentacles, three of cups. 
Also three, three, three adds up to the number nine, the hermit. So that lets me know that these threes are the things that you are really honing in on. And I find it interesting that it's in the space of the mirror and the physical part of your reading. This is what you physically want to focus on in the 3D. So you could be focused on third house energies, specifically in the 3D, which talks a lot about communication style, that throat chakra. But what you're being called to focus on in the 3D I'm hearing it does have a lot to do with technology. Connection. Community. Camaraderie. You're being led in the direction of being a great example, which will put you in the space to be the middleman for something or someone. You are the source of connectivity, expansion, creativity, inspiration, love, light, joy. The King of Wands lets me know that you are the groundskeeper to make sure everything is running in tip top shape. You're the reason why this communion, this community is coming together. So in the physical, you need to really take a step back and see what you've built for yourself within your family, within your friend circle. I did mention online, so for some of you, this is about online. And you need to celebrate that coming together, that connectivity. Also, in the physical, you're being called to not only be the overseer, but also be a part of it as well. To connect, to immerse yourself in it, to become dedicated in more ways than one. This is putting in more effort with your friends and your family. This is showing up to functions a little bit more often, popping out a little bit more. Not because anyone says that you have to, but simply because you feel called to. Not because you feel forced to, but simply because you feel called to. You're going to find yourself following a lot more callings at this time. And that's going to do you some, some justice. That's going to do you some good. I'm also getting here too, in combination with this message, comes in the need for showing up and being there and observing because there's a lot for you to take away. There's a lot for you to learn as well as a lot for you to celebrate. Honestly, in the 3D, you're really just being called to focus on connection and letting life inspire you. This King of Wands lets me know that you've already got something going, whatever this may be. For some of you, this is culinary school. Let life inspire your culinary works. For some of you, this is your YouTube channel. Let life inspire your YouTube channel's creations. It's going to lead to a lot of success for you. Being in this observant, but also immersed energy 
to witness what's going on and be a part of what's going on. It's going to create a lot of abundance and creativity and coming together for you. This is the focus for your 3D self, your physical self. Here is your focus coming to you from the higher self. Remember when I said that you wanted to not give up and fight a little bit harder? That's coming from your higher self. Saying that I see progress already. I've already come this far with progressing, with fighting, with constantly going, with seeing it through no matter how difficult it may have gotten. And that brought me joy despite the pitfalls. So I don't know about you, but I don't want to give up. This is your higher self communicating to your physical self. We've already come this far. Again, you're already in this King of Wands energy. You've already done something, established something, accepted something, mastered something, dominated something. So I'm not going to give up now just because the going gets a little bit tougher than I've ever seen. When in reality, it's just new levels, new devils type of thing. And when I say devils, I just mean complications, things that you feel like are holding you back. And that's not me downgrading the experiences because shit, sometimes it is a new devil that you're just like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to see this one through. But your higher self is letting you know, yes, you will. And the new destination, the new focus, it, I don't know why this um, combination here with the Queen of Swords and the Ace of Pentacles literally is coming through to me as charge it to the game. There's some things that you're being called to just charge to the game in your life, which means take that L and keep it pushing. Sometimes your investments don't come back like you want them to. I don't care. Keep it pushing. That's the mentality of your higher self right now. I don't care what goes on. Charge to the game and keep pushing because it's going to come back to you tenfold, if not now, eventually. So... What's being poured into you is perseverance. That's what this full moon, what this season is sharing with you is the true spirit of perseverance and not just when the going gets a little bit tough. I'm talking when you're on the verge of giving up. Charge it to the game and persevere. Keep that fire burning because you are not a quitter. I don't care how many shitty people you feel like you're surrounded by. I don't care if literally the whole entire world goes to shit and you're the only good thing left in it. Be that good thing and express it wholeheartedly. Butterfly effect. All it takes is one small motion to create a whole wave of change. You are that change. You are that wave. Do not stop just because the going gets tough. You know who stops when the going gets tough? No, you don't because you don't know who they are because the only people that you know in this world are the ones that didn't stop when the going got tough. Somebody pisses you off, charges the game, keep it pushing. Alchemize that energy, keep it pushing. Transmute that energy. Keep it pushing. Persevere. My third eye chakra is really doing a dance right now. So when someone tests your trust or breaks your trust, charge to the game and keep it pushing. Their lack of character, their lack of morality says nothing about you and everything about them. Don't think about it as if like, Oh, they didn't see my good character. You're not here to change people with your good character. That's not your job. You're here to apply pressure with your good character and create, expand with like beings. That's where heaven is. Don't try to change the whole world. Just focus on you and change your world. 
and then it will be a domino effect as it already has been. Because looking here in your 3D, honestly, you're just being called to keep going and let life inspire you. So your continuous message through all of this is to keep going, charge to the game when the going gets tough, Someone lies to you, charge to the game, apply that pressure, apply that energy in your respective creative field and keep it pushing. Charge it to the game, group number two. Charge it to the game. Group number three with the Osprey energy. This card states, your success is now at hand. Allow the abundance to flow to you effortlessly. Let's go ahead and dive into your reading and see how this Capricorn full moon is pouring into you to bring ease and effortlessness and flow of abundance and success into your world. I'm gonna pull your cards first and then we'll get into your messages. Wow. Wow. I truly have chills, actually. Um, the first thing I was getting, some sort of dream is coming into your waking life. This is something that you have to fight for, something that you have to compete for. Whether you see it or not, your methods have gotten you into a top percentile, a top group.
your only key, your only main focus is to continue to put yourself and your methods first because they've gotten you this far. Self-trust is rewarding you. That's what this Capricorn full moon is revealing to you. It's revealing to you who and what is worth fighting for. It's revealing to you how helpful your past actions, thoughts, etc., etc., actually meant how helpful they were. How divine those movements were because of how it's translating into your world today. In the space of other people, this card hematite reveals itself with the number 19, which talks about solar plexus energy and the sun card in tarot. <clears throat> Excuse me. It reveals mental strength and root chakra. I'm also seeing in this imagery, I'm seeing images of roses and a bull head. Roses can expand, can be talking about expansion of the heart. The bull head, I'm actually seeing that skull, like the skull of a, a bull head with the horns, which talks about life after death or life in death, life and rebirth. This Capricorn full moon is revealing to you your mental strength and your mental capacity that puts you in the top percentile that we were just talking about over here. And the only way to grow that, to nurture that, and to see that expand is by continuing that path of self-trust. Other people could literally be revealing to you your own mental strength. You could be receiving compliments about this or just little comments that people are like, oh, you're so stubborn or oh, you're so this, you're so that. Whether it comes across as like a shadow comment from people or a compliment of light from people, it's going to be revealed to you or through you how mentally strong and capable you really are. Again, something about that top percentile keeps coming through. Maybe for some of you, you're literally going to be taking an IQ test and it's going to be um, revealing to you uh, how intelligent you are, how capable you are um, beyond your own previous comprehension. And I want to talk about in the space of what's healing here. The rose quartz love heart chakra with the number 34 is revealed because those roses that I said that I saw in this imagery to me represents the heart. To see a rose expand next to a skull that I mentioned earlier clarifies that you can bring life to any situation, to any scenario where most people see a dead end, you see a way out. Your ancestors want you to know that this is a gift of expansion, of luck, that you are awakening to. It's always been there. And you've already been actively utilizing this energy.
but it's the new discovery, the new realization, the new processing of what everything that you've really been doing has meant up until this time. I feel like you've been doing all this, all these great things with a blindfold on, the blindfold is being dropped and you are being revealed to yourself in the mirror position. We have the towering magnificence. Your blindfold is being removed at this divine point in time so that you can move forward again. My group number threes, you've already been winning. And if you don't see this, it's time to take a step back and first of all, apologize to yourself, apologize to God, apologize to everybody because you've been making moves you've been doing it like your reading has this energy written all over it that says this is nothing new for my group number threes actually what the capricorn moon is doing for you is just removing the blindfold oh shit i just realized my guy in the eight of swords down here has on a blindfold okay beautiful but i don't want to jump i don't want to jump the gun We've just gone through this top row. And again, the difference, what sets you apart from the other groups so far is that they are almost being introduced to new energy. For you, you're just expanding into a familiar energy. Angel of Jupiter awaken, removing that blindfold to your towering magnificence. It's almost like you've been blindfolded because you're afraid of heights and you didn't know that you were scaling a mountain and now spirit's about to remove that blindfold off of you and show you reveal to you your view from where you have worked up to and it's going to be scary in the best way it's going to be absolutely terrifying but in the best possible way. And let me take a break to sip some water. Also, if you hear my stomach, just let it be. We are channeling on an empty tummy intentionally. So we've gone through this top row. Now I wanna focus on this bottom row. These first three cards are referring to your physical reality and what you need to focus on in the physical i have to admit this feels like juggling ah yeah this is you turning your back on a lot of things you um resisting and it shall flee from you you know how they say Res resist the devil and it shall and it shall flee from you um i think the devil might have fleed from you and could be returning to test your boundaries again. And this is just gonna teach you more resistance. It's also going to help expand you spiritually, mentally, and emotionally to elevate you even higher on that mountain. I'm telling you, you've been scaling a mountain with a blindfold on. That's how good you are. Do you get what I'm saying? Like. Your senses are so keen that you've been able to scale a mountain blindfolded on your own. And you've been able to guide, lead, and take other people with you. That's your focus right now, is to fight whatever it is that's trying to call you back down the mountain into whatever realms or situations that you have graduated from that will send you on a spiritual quest or spiritual journey you know when you fast from something you have to find other spiritual means of coping that's what's going on here in your physical 3d world finding new means to cope and i don't know like it really feels spiritual like maybe you'll find yourself in deeper meditations. Maybe you'll find yourself discovering new places to just 
escape to. I'm seeing someone next to like a creek or a river or a pond. And I don't know why I'm getting this. What you didn't know won't hurt you with the six of swords. And it's in relation to you taking other people with you, helping other people do what you do or straight up like volunteering your time, effort and energy for others. You combating some sort of toxic past energy has you discovering new possibilities, new depths, new realms, and new ways to connect with other people and help other people. Essentially, this is you determining who seriously wants to scale this mountain and you are allotting your resources to benefit them as well and ignoring the ones that just pretend that they want to scale the mountain and just talk about it nah this is like the real thing this is you ciphering through to determine who seriously wants to succeed, who seriously wants to see the view from the top and not just talk about it. This is like you gathering a team or a few people to teach your ways, to teach your methods, to really spend time on to spend time with this is giving this vibe of mentoring influencing this is these are the things that you want to focus on in your physical world your higher self here has a message and it's represented by the knight of cups the death card and the high priestess Remember I said that a dream was touching down and coming into reality? Your higher self is connecting the dots here for you. Also, your higher self, I don't know if y'all can hear those birds outside, but they are so active. But your higher self is helping you to integrate that energy that's almost a little cold hearted. And I use that term lightly because you have the heart chakra, so it's not necessarily cold, cold hearted, but basically your higher self is teaching you to not have empathy in places where it's not deserving. Don't have empathy for the ones that pretend that they want to scale the mountain, but in reality, they just want to distract you. They just want to be in your business. Don't feel bad for that. Your higher self, there's there's something very spiritual about this group here. Um, there's something here about your higher self that's calling you to recognize that being nice or being overly caring or overly giving, that season is over. I'm trying to figure out how I can use this as a comparison. Like, okay, think of it like a teacher or someone that has to maintain a professional stature. Um, basically, you are being shown some lines in the sand in regards to boundaries. The way that a teacher or politicians or people in specific positions have to 
be quiet or remain balanced in some way, shape, or form and not say every little thing that comes to their mind because of their position or because they just can't waste the energy. Like those types of people where their silence speaks louder than their words, you are becoming more of this type. The type that is less emotional and more matter of fact. The type that sees through what's actually going on in the 3D, meaning if someone is berating you or talking down on you, you will see that in reality it's because they are jealous of you or they want to be in your position or they just don't have the mental capacity to see you. Basically, it's, how do I describe it? Like basically with the towering magnificence, it's like you are realizing that you are not digestible or comprehendable to the average mind, to the average person. This is your higher self helping you to lean into authenticity and the power of self-expression without feeling the need to over-explain your existence. And it no longer getting to you because you're misunderstood. Realizing that you being at a higher frequency means that you are quite literally untouchable, incomprehensible, unable to be comprehended by lower frequencies. And so instead of trying to fill the gap between your frequency and others, You're just taking it as it is. And there's some sort of space. I almost feel like a void that's being created for you, like next to you, not within you, but to the side of you. Well, it actually is within you, like a, a void, like a black hole or a black space for you to just throw these things into. And it gets... It transpires into something later for your benefit, for your growth. It's almost like, um, what is that? Oh my gosh, like the term biodegradable is coming through, but composting, when you take trash and you turn it into something better, something more magnificent, something useful, you are growing in this way. Because I think at some point in time, you really fought for being understood. And now you realize that that is an unfair fight, nearly an impossible battle to win. And it just takes a lot of energy. And so you're no longer wasting energy in spaces where it's just not necessary, where it's not needed. which leads me to your last two cards in this spread, which is about the final destination, the end goal, where you're headed. This looks like someone who's about to cross a finish line here. You, like we are literally looking from the perspective of the runner and these 
wands represent the finish line and there's already people cheering for you there. This eight of swords talks about you staying in your zone, tapping into that runner's high energy as you want to give up, but the, the finish line is right there. So keep going. I'm being guided to roll the dice for your advice. And that is also going to add to the final destination message. The moon, 10th house, Capricorn. The moon. over the Eight of Swords and under the Towering Magnificence. This is about self. The way that you feel about yourself, the way that you see yourself. The blindfold is being removed, therefore your perspective is being heightened. This says Angel of Jupiter Awaken. I'm seeing Angel of Awareness. Your ancestors are leading you to some sort of an awareness that is going to make your emotions and your feelings work for you instead of against you. which is also going to be boosting your confidence. But from a spiritual point. And this confidence boost is giving you the drive that you need to see it through to beat out the competition with the number 10 on top of the five of wands. You beat out the competition when you realize that you are your only competition. This moon over here, this is you finding a new zone. Finding a new way to get into your zone, finding new methods, routines, practices. Capricorn on top of the six of swords here those new spiritual things that I was talking about that you'll be diving into discovering and tapping into more is putting you on your own wave tapping you into your own personal wealth which is bringing you luck beyond comprehension beyond what you've ever seen before for yourself You're tapping into a new high, spiritually speaking. You are ascending to a towering magnificence where you will stand out, not even in comparison to anybody, you just stand out, period, no matter the environment, no matter who's around, no matter what's going on. Expect to reach a new personal record. Group number four. That resonates with the spider spirit. Make your dreams real. The number 56. Let's go ahead and dive into your reading. I'm first going to pull your cards and then we will get into the messages meant to find you in regards to how the Capricorn full moon is meant to fill you up, charge you up, make things easier and flow better for you.
Okay, wow. Capricorn full moon energy is blowing the top off of a lot of things, exposing a lot of people, creating a lot of endings, beginnings, and sparking conversations that are healing yet shocking, surprising, unexpected. The main first thing that I want to come across here that I want to address has to do with the effect that you have on people. This Capricorn full moon energy is revealing to you your hidden powers, your hidden tendencies. You're leveling up to some form of mastery, some form of completion, at least for your current state of equilibrium, for your current frequency, your current level of ascension. you are reaching some level of mastery or at least having a lot of people, places and things revealing to you how trusted, well-respected you are. I'm getting that this is in every aspect of your life, your friendships, your family ties and connections romantic relationships, in the workplace, your power, your drive, your ambition, your integrity. It's all coming together to reveal your spiritual self, which is huge. Your spiritual self has so much power, has so much essence, has so much energy that it cannot be ignored to where it is now touching down in 3D. So expect to literally, as the spider spirit says, make your dreams real. I see a lot of moving parts, but nothing that you can't handle. I see you delegating yourself and others and energy extremely well. Speaking of others, in the place of others, we have the Labradorite 23 Psychic Ability Third Eye Chakra coming out. If you utilize your psychic abilities in any way, shape, or form, and other people acknowledge this, It's heightening. You're going into a new height. You're expanding into a new realm. You're also being given a glimpse into your own future essence so that you can start doing something now or in this season of the Capricorn full moon. This will carry you with a lot of resources into the next level chapter field of discovery. Other people will also be coming to you telling you that they had dreams of you or that they've been thinking about you or other people will literally be feeling your essence, your energy a lot. Again, you have big energy, big, big, big energy and it's working for you now. You put in the work energetically to now have this energy to work for you. There's an effortlessness gracing you, similar to the way that a spider weaves its web. They don't have to think about it. It's in their nature, they just do it. In the space of healing, you have, oh wow, I just realized, you have nature, heart chakra. As I said, it's in their nature, they just do it. Something within you is healing 
your heart chakra to make something more natural for you so that you don't have to fight so hard for this natural psychic ability, these natural gifts, and you don't have to share these gifts for them to be expanding. Everyone has psychic gifts, intuition, and abilities, but not everyone chooses to acknowledge them. So whether you share them with people out in the real world or if you just keep them to yourself, I want you to know that it's expanding in a way that is expanding your world. Your dreams will be made a lot clearer. You'll be a lot more clear on how you're meant to be spending your time. In the space of ancestors, you have beauty here. You're literally going to be graced with a glow up. That's point blank, simple and plain. The ancestors are letting you know. I don't know if some of you are coming into a specific age or there's something here about like your your growth, your expansion, your aging that is just naturally gifting you with some sort of shift in your physical appearance. The number 58, this is a new cycle of beauty for you. A type of beautiful that you've never been before. You're already beautiful. There's different types of beauty. You are tapping into a yet another level of beauty. And in the space of the mirror, we have the blood dance. These two go hand in hand, your ancestors and your mirror energy. You could notice that you begin to take on the image of a specific ancestor in your life. Someone could tell you about someone that you resemble and you maybe never met this individual. But you and this person are very, very, very close. You're going to start looking in the mirror and feel like it's a familiar stranger. And it's all about your integration. You're coming into a soul awakening. This group here is deeply soulful. Where the other groups may have felt these awakenings in the higher chakras, you're going to feel this awakening from your feet up. It's going to change the base of who you are, the way you walk, the way you talk, the way you dress, the way you think, the things that you eat. It's going to transform all of that. They say like every seven years, your, your cells regenerate or something like that. Maybe this is like your seventh year again. But there's new formulation in your DNA, in your blood. You're being regenerated, you're being renewed, you're being refreshed. So this is why you look different. This is why you look new. So we've addressed everything across the top. Now we're gonna get into these other energies here. These first three cards are bringing into the forefront what you need to focus on in your physical life. This is strictly about resource management, time management, money management. Expect to create schedules, routines, diet plans. This is the only thing being highlighted by these three cards for me, actually. Also, I don't know if I mentioned it up there somewhere. If you notice that your sleep cycle changes or you notice that you're not sleeping, that's because you're meant to be utilizing that time. And when I say utilizing that time, sometimes the only type of utilizing you need is prayer, meditation, a walk, a run.
in your physical world, expect to use your resources more wisely. Expect to become wise in general, wiser in general. You'll notice that you have the inspiration to move certain things around, stop doing this, start doing this instead, add this, subtract that. Like I said, you're changing at a cellular level. That's going to change your patterns too. This is bound in heavy Capricorn energy. This is your top level of productivity that you are about to step into. This will be a chapter that you look back on and say, I got the most accomplished in this season. I got the most done in this season. People will be like, why? Well, how'd you do that? Because of this schedule here because of this routine here, because of this budgeting here, because of this mentality here, because I stopped doing this here, because I started doing this here. Now your higher self wants to talk through these three cards. Your higher self says that when you follow suit with these new shifts and changes, that will align you with what I have already lined up for you. Expect new career movements, promotions, conversations that you didn't know that you needed. I think I said something like that already. Healing conversations, healing concepts. Um, also, I'm picking up on something about a meeting here, like a business meeting. A contractual agreement. to make your dreams real. That's what we've been revving you up for. Your higher self has several different people lined up for you to meet or to come across on your journey, on your path. That's the main thing that your higher self is bringing to your awareness. Everything that you've been doing up until this point, every change that you've been undergoing, every ounce of power that you've been stepping into for yourself is to prepare you for these people, to prepare you for these meetings, to prepare you for these conversations, to prepare you to win these awards to prepare you to step into these rooms. These things are being revealed to you. I really feel like if you experience dreams or I, I don't know, let me know in the comment section down below how you receive future visions in whatever way, because you are coming into a season where either for some of you, this will be the first time that you experience this, but I really don't think so. I think this group here in whatever way that you intuitively download information or receive dreams or visions, that's going to be at an all time high, revealing to you step by step what room you're gonna be walking into, who you're gonna be running into. Even if it doesn't give you an exact description of the person, you will have an idea. You'll know when the meeting is divine. These last two cards I pulled with the intention of revealing to us the destination, the end goal, 
the main focus right now. And that's signified by judgment and the four of swords. This is alignment with ease, without question. Intuition that you trust wholeheartedly. A vision that you trust wholeheartedly for yourself and others around you. The way that you move with ease is in your nature. You're no longer fighting your true nature. You're flowing and cycling through life as you were always meant to. But it took some reconfiguring, some readjustments along the way. It took instilling self-trust in you and to unlearn, relearn, forget completely and learn new information. This is your talisman, your rule book, your path. This Capricorn full moon is kind of catching you up with the bosses or the people that have been in charge that have already known where you were headed, but you just weren't ready to know until now. And even now, you will only know what you are meant to know. Rolling the dice for your advice. Yes. I'm telling you, you are just like a well-oiled divine machine. With 12th house on top of psychic abilities and nature, holy shit. Okay, I just don't even know what to say other than holy shit. <laughs> Your spiritual gifts are magnificent, magnifique. Your vision is magnificent. All you have to do is trust it and follow it. Pluto, Cancer. I'm telling you, change those routines. Just follow the flow of your new comfortable routines. You have new roots. You are developing new roots, which is growing a new tree, growing a new plant. You are in the season of planting a new seed. And like I said, this will be the season that you look back at and say, damn, that's where I grew the most. That's where I gained the most knowledge, the most information. That's when I made the most progress. Prepare to be divinely brought up to speed. <laughs> 